mathematics and universe together mathers now the topic i'm going to start today is indices now indices is a very important concept it is one of the basic mathematical concepts that we need to know now indices is not only important for boards but also it is it is for boards I mean school level examinations of class 9 especially in most of the Indian salary and then for several competitive exams uh, and also competitive exams and also it is too much important for those who are preparing for SAT mathematics or GRE general test okay so and actually in this one so many examinations are there for those who have a little bit problem in indices they should follow this video and i think not i think i'm sure that it will clear all the concepts that is needed for to crack any problem from indices okay so let's start with this The first concept of indices comes from multiplication actually. See, when we multiply a number, particularly I am taking the number 2, when we multiply a particular number again with itself, rather than writing it two times, we just perform this one. The number is 2, how many times it has been multiplied with it? Two times. I mean, two twos are associated here therefore this two number we are writing here right this is the very concept of power we say to two to the power two or two square actually we do never say two to the power two yeah we say two to the power four which is actually two into two into two into two but we do not ever say that two to the power three or two square uh, <laughs> two to the power two we say two square or 2q right now let me take any arbitrary number and what do we take any arbitrary number we take it as x so let x is one number and we have another number which is our index for this one that is m so what does it mean actually it means that x to the power m means x x x x into x into x into dot 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 here is also so many x there x's are there x so how many x's are there multiplied one with another m numbers now in algebra we always assume unknown quantities as known quantity what is known quantity what is unknown quantity obviously here x is one unknown quantity or in general we are talking about a particular number of on which we are going to take this power this power m means what x is in multiplied by x itself m times right so i should say m minus one times because if we multiply this one this is one time x into x into x it is multiplied two times so in this way when here will be m number of x's m number of x's will be here then x is being multiplied with itself m minus one times that is not our concern what is our main concern here is this one and the second thing which is uh, quite different from it that is x to the power minus m it is plus m, it is minus m. So what x to the minus m means? It means that 1 by x, 1 by x into 1 by x into dot 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 1 by x. It has been multiplied m times. So this is the main, I know the, it is the, if, if index is the, if index is This is our main thing that we need to study and based upon which everything of indices or index has come. Okay, 
So let's start with the properties or rules of indices. How the indices work and how we should manipulate them to solve several problems both in examinations and also in real life. I have <coughs> I'm sorry. I have devoted entire one video for the real life application of indices, right? So, let's start. The first one and the very important rule of index is that x to the power m into x to the power m. Okay? Here it is equal to x to the power m plus n. Now I can show I can demonstrate one example. Let us take 5. x equal to 5. Okay? I am taking it once. And n is equal to 2, n be equal to 3. Okay. So if this is this thing is true, you don't have to trust me. You have to trust the mathematics. Okay. What I have written here is a statement, but you should check it. So let us do it. Right? If x if this one is equal to true, then uh, leave it. Take x equal to five, m equal to two, n equal to three. Right? Make a partition. Calculate here x is 5, so x to the power m, m is 2 into x is 5, n is equal to 3. Okay? If I am true or if this thing is true, then if we if we compare this thing with 5 to the power 2 plus 3, then both of them will be same. Now I will, su I will suggest you guys to calcul try to calculate them in your mind. So this is 25 into 125, right? And this one is obviously 5 to the power 5, right? So if this thing is true, then we will find these two equal. If not, then they will, they will be not equal, okay? So let's multiply 125 into 25. I am multiplying it 25, 5. 525 so 12 we have 12 then 25 into 2 50 to 62 6 25 1 so 31 31 to 5 now 5 to the power 5 what will happen 5 5 square 25 5 cube 125 then again 5 625 then again 5 3 1 2 5 you can verify it by calculator or by manually calculating Okay, 3, 1, 2, 5. So both of them are same. Therefore, this one is true. Okay. So this one was the first very basic rule of index. And I would suggest you guys, for the next rules that I shall write here, I would suggest you to, you know what, somehow check them. Check them. You can use it, use a calculator, but I would not suggest that because you guys are too young to use a calculator. You guys should do it by your own. Okay? Sometimes mental mental math helps you in a lot of things. Okay, so the second one. The second property is x to the power m into x to the power minus n. This one is equal to what? We all know x to the power m, keep it as it is, but as I sh but as I showed you earlier. What is x to the power x to the power minus of something? Just 1 by x to the power that thing. Okay? So this one is 1 by x to the power n. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It will be an n. So as a whole, x to the power m by x to the power n. What does it mean actually? It means whenever there is a minus before the power, then it will be 1 by that. Okay? The minus, minus shows us that this thing will be the this x to the power minus n is the reciprocal of 1 by sorry this one is equal to 1 by x to the power n and what is 1 by x to the power n is reciprocal reciprocal of x to the power n right so <coughs> this one was our second rule or second property of index Third one. Now, this third one is
This third one tells us about when two indices get multiplied. Okay? What is happening here? See, if we if we take this thing in this place in the, the place of this one also, then what we shall get x to the power m will remain as it is. But then there is a minus n. So minus this is the thing. So what we have seen here, we have seen two powers or two indices are getting added. Oh sorry, are getting added. They are getting subtracted. Now, when do they get multiplied? There should be one case also where they are getting multiplied. That thing is this one. x to the power m to the power n. In this case, they are going to be multiplied. Because you guys can think in this way, what is happening in this case? Here, x to the power m into x to the power m into x to the power m in this way we are multiplying x to the power m exactly n times okay so if you if you consider x to the power m consider x to the power m as a single number a so this is nothing but a is being multiplied n times so what we know we know a to the power n this will be a to the power n obviously because x to the power n is a then when we shall multiply this will become x to the power m n because a is equal to x to the power n, right? So, this was the multiplication of indices. So, when the indices get divided, there is one also goes out. What happens here? When x to the power m whole to the power 1 by n, then this is x to the power m by n. But, I haven't talked about this fractional index. I haven't yet. What is this one? C. I think you all are familiar with this root x, cubed root of x, this type of things, right? So, by default, root x is equal to x to the power half, cubed root of x is actually, actually x to the power one third, and so on. So what is this if we if I write here if I write here x to the power 1 by n what does it mean x to the power 1 by n what does it mean it means that nth root of x this is what means okay so what is the meaning of this one nth root of x to the power n right so these are the four very important operations or rules of indices, right? Let's come to the next one, the fifth one. This is a very important one. Uh, all of them are important, but this one is a uh, little bit more important. This is x to the power 0. x to the power 0 is equal to 1. Whatever the number x is, x may be any real number, but if you take power 0, then it will turn, turn out to be 1. Right? Okay. So, let's come to the next property. And from this one, if you observe this, hmm, here if you take the same thing, then it will give you x to the power 0. And x to the power 0 is again 1. Let us come to the next property. So far, I have talked about the same number and then power something, right? Same number to the power something, same number to the power something. Now, I am going to change it with different number, same indices. What will happen then? If I have x to the power m into y to the power m, then we can write it as x, y, whole to the power m, okay? Now, let me tell you guys one thing. You try. I know that you people love mathematics. So, or I will make you love, fall in love with mathematics. So, you will try at least once to verify all this formula with the help of some known numbers. Like I did in the first question, 5, 2, 3. 
try to that try to do in that way it will be very much beneficial for all of you right now this is the property next one what will happen in this case now see I'm not talking too much about this rules because they're very intuitive you can think about them okay by somehow so this one will become x to the power m by y to the power m right this is another important rule and it will be used several times while solving problems okay let me tell you something talking about all these rules has no meaning unless and until you can apply them in solving problems and I shall try my best to give you a set of questions which are not only tricky but also really good but not that tricky which is like uh, Olympian level problems it those are not but at least I shall try to help you to understand how to solve problems okay so I don't think there is any rule left let me check once no all the rules are done here okay so I hope that you guys have observed the video if you want you can take a screenshot here okay let me tell you in the next video that how you guys should solve problems I shall take some very important problems it is not like from NCRT for from any other places it is, it is randomly chosen I have chosen them from one or two books and I think that those problems are enough for you people to understand how to play the game, the game of solving problems of indices. Okay, so just wait for that video. Uh, that is going to be uploaded very soon. I think it is going to be uploaded tomorrow only. And try to solve as many problems as you can do. And please do like this video share this among your friends and also among your enemies and please subscribe my channel at least now i really need to grow my channel i need to i need to you know what i'm on a mission i'm on a mission and you guys are my delta and all those things okay you know why i'm on a mission of removing the fear of mathematics from everyone's mind there are two misconceptions about mathematics. Mathematics is very hard, which is obviously a misconception. And the second one is that mathematics has no logic. I have to remove that. We do solve mathematics, but we don't love mathematics. Now just imagine if we do anything without love, what is a massacre is that? Okay? So you people go through them. Watch the video again and again if you don't have any doubt anywhere. Though I haven't said anything logical here so far. But I would wish you guys check them again and again. And verify them with several numbers. And try to find some new rule by your own. That is the way you will feel about our research on indices. Okay. So thank you for watching. If you have seen this far. Please subscribe my channel. Ta-da!